Hey, boys and girls, this book is called Z At the Zoo by David M. Schwartz, photographs by Dwight Kuhn. Look once, look again, At the Zoo. At the Zoo by David M. Schwartz. <clears throat> look once. In the wild, these stripes spell danger. They belong to the world's largest cat. Look again. A tiger's stripes are easy to see at the zoo. But in the wild, these stripes help a tiger blend into the tall grass where it hunts for food. Small animals may not see the prowling tiger until it's too late. Look once. This spot is called an eye spot. It looks like an eye, but it cannot see. It's on the tail of a big, colorful bird that roams the zoo. Look again, the peacock. A male spreads his tail feathers into a giant fan. Only the males have showy feathers with eye spots. Peahens, the females, are dull brown. The peacock rattles his tail feathers loudly so a peahen will notice him. He is one big show-off. What kind of cat has such long whiskers on its snout? The lion has long whiskers and a keen sense of smell. In the wild, the female does most of the hunting. A lion's whiskers help it feel its way through the brush. Look once. These eyelashes belong to a huge animal with very small eyes. Those are really long eyelashes. The long eyelashes of the African elephant help protect its eyes from dust and sand. African elephants are enormous. Some stand 13 feet or four meters high and weigh seven tons or six metric tons. Elephants have very little hair. They stay warm because they're so big. They do not need a fur coat. Look once, big hairy humps like these could only belong to a... Look again, camel. Camels with one hump are from Africa. Camels with two humps are from Asia. A camel stores fat for food in its humps. It can go many days without eating or drinking. Look once. It is strong and sharp. It can crack the hardest nutshells. Don't stick your finger into this nutcracker. Look again. The Amazon parrot uses its beak to open nuts and seeds. It holds food with its feet, then reaches down with its thick, hooked beak. Crack! The shell falls to the ground. Where does the seed go? It goes down the parrot's throat. Look once. Do you see black stripes on white or white stripes on black? Only one animal wears stripes like these. Look again. In the zoo, a zebra's stripes are easy to spot. But in the wild, the stripes blur when a zebra runs. Then it's harder for lions to see and catch a zebra. If it's caught, a zebra will fight with its powerful hooves. Sometimes it can even kill a lion. Look closely. Can you name these animals? Well, I know this one's a zebra because I'm looking at it right now. And I remember the long eyelashes of the elephant and the whiskers of a lion, that's a camel, tiger, peacock, parrot. <clears throat> Here's the answers. Look again, looks like we got them right. How many were you able to identify correctly? We got them all, guys. This is a glossary. This is a common feature in a nonfiction text. And this is a nonfiction text because it's giving you real information about real animals. And the glossary tells you the definitions of important vocabulary words. So it says whiskers, the long stiff hairs that grow near the mouth of some animals. 
So if you were reading a book and you didn't know what one of the words meant, you could look it up in the glossary. These are activities uh, that you can do uh, regarding the zoo. And this is further study, more books to read, videos or websites you can go to if you wanna learn about these animals. And this is an index. An index is another important feature of a nonfiction text. It tells you important vocabulary words that are in the text and what pages they're mentioned on, right? So if you wanna know every page that mentions Africa, it would be page 11, page 12, and page 14. So the index can be very helpful in finding information within a book. This book is called Look Once, Look Again, At the Zoo by David M. Schwartz. I hope you liked this book.